Thanks to the Orioles on Masson as the O's continue this homestand, the final one of the season. And tonight, it is a season rubber match game as the Orioles have an opportunity to win the season series if they can beat the Jays in this final meeting of these two teams. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne. Welcome for the Orioles. We have talked so much this year about the defense that they have had. So we're talking here in the final few days about some gold gloves. The Orioles legitimately have a shot probably at five gold gloves. One of those is at first base. Let me pull up my hand dandy dandy white sheet though because things are different this year when we talk about players and defensive play there's going to be a new element the great plays you've seen Chris Davis make all season long saving errors making plays at first like that certainly if you watch him every day you say there can't be anybody better but the sabermetrics people this year for the first time are going to be involved 25 percent of the weight going to the gold glove votes is going to come from them an index which features some of the items we've got here. The fielding percentage has always been there. Chris, number one all season long. That defensive replacement number, he is 10th, 5th for Hosmer, 1st for Napoli. The range factor, which comes from that index, he is 10th, Hosmer is 1st, Napoli is 3rd. In fact, Napoli, when you use the Sabre metrics numbers, comes out on top in many of the categories. And this year, for the first time, it will account for 25% of the weight given to selecting the Gold Glove winner, voted on by the coaches and managers at the Major League level. So I don't know what to think this year. Uh, well, I, I went to the resident expert, and that's Buck Showalter. I said... How about Chris Davis uh, for the gold glove? We know he's going to uh, lead the league in extra base hits, home runs, uh, maybe even RBIs. He goes, no way. And he's not because he's not a good defensive player, because he is. You know, last year we saw him play right field. We saw him play third base. We saw him pitch. He's a very agile guy, great target over there, soft hands, good range. I'm surprised he's 10th in range factor. But it also gives you an idea. Napoli, former catcher, has the hip problem. He's done a nice job at first base. And we know Hosmer can really pick it over there. I mean, he's an agile young guy. Two other names in there. Loney, he's done a great job mm -hmm. for Tampa Bay, who has the second best defense in baseball right behind the Orioles. They're going to break the all-time record, too, that uh, Seattle held. And then another guy is Justin Smoke up in Seattle, but he plays up in the Northwest, so everybody's probably going to forget about him, which is unfortunate. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting, Jim, to see how that vote turns out. Uh, that will come, of course, at the end of the season. Right now, the managers and coaches, in fact, are voting. The ballots are out. We'll be back. Adam Jones will be the subject of our discussion in a minute. University of Maryland University College. 
Here at Camden Yards, another gorgeous evening for baseball. Take a look at our train game time temperature tonight. It is 73 degrees, clear skies, no breeze at all. Trend is celebrating its 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It is hard to stop a train, really hard. It'll be Reyes, Kawasaki, Lowry, Sierra, Gosar, and Sibia. Langer, Hans, Goins, and Pilar in the lineup. Kawasaki, one of his bigger nights, tying his career high in hits last night with four. And our scouting report on the 29-year-old right-hander out of Guadalajara, Mexico, Miguel Gonzalez. The Orioles got him out of the Mexican League beginning of uh, last season. While the right yard, uh, not too many people like to pitch here. Miguel, not one of them. Six and two. 3.81 ERA, 4 and 6 on the road. ERA just a little bit higher, a little over four runs. Well, the real Miguel, is this the guy that was started out 7 and 3, low ERA, under four runs a game, or the guy that's 3 and 5 with uh, over four and a half runs a game? Well, September's been good for him, 2 and 1, and then 19 and 12 lifetime, and then the right stuff. He's got four pitches. All he has to do, again, this is not the, your, uh, you would never know it from last night, but not your. Your home run hitting uh, Blue Jays because of injuries with Encarnacion and Batista out of the lineup, and uh, we'll see how he does tonight. And there are the numbers. Uh, righties hitting him a lot better than lefties. And Jose Reyes will lead it off and will take the pitch outside for a ball. Reyes with a 4-4-9. Four, four, you see an RBI and three runs scored in the series. He's been a consistent in the lineup here in this three-game set. He will take the pitch for a strike. And it goes to one and one. He's had an 0 for 3 against Miguel Gonzalez. Gonzalez coming off the loss against Tampa Bay, even though he gave up just three runs on two hits in six innings, but two walks scored on a home run by Jennings against him. And that was the downfall. Take a loss where you've given up two hits. I figure things probably aren't going my way tonight. Yeah, the five walks a little bit unusual, but again, the two walks right before the home run, and you don't. When you're not getting a lot of run support, which is the case, like to give up three run home runs. Put that one back into the seats, and the count will remain at two balls and two strikes. Well, they, again, this is only the third game of this series, but the more you see Jose Reyes, you understand why he's a terrific leadoff batter. He takes pitches. When you make a mistake, he can hit them hard. He's hit some good pitches. Had a great curveball off Hamill last night, just missed a home run. Reyes would have meant a lot to this ball club had he been available for all of them. He's hitting 284, 79 games coming off the DL and has gotten better uh, as each game has gone along. For John Gibbons, obviously, one of the real losses on the season was not having him for the whole year. That is in there. Gonzalez gets the call. Reyes not really happy with it, and there's one away. Well, Going to show up the umpire, and one of the problems early on, and this pitch probably a little bit low, but it's the first inning. Gonzalez trying to find out what a strike is. Reyes thinks it's low. Jerry Davis doing the umpiring says, uh, "See ya. Go back, get the glove, and now you know what the strike zone is." Quiet moment of contemplation. Well, the good thing for uh, Jose, when you do that, you're really going to get the close pitches the yep, rest of the game. Exactly. You really, I mean, umpires really embrace that attitude. <laughs> I mean, they love that body language because it really makes them look good. <laughs> Here is Kawasaki. Kawasaki will take the off speed delivery. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, is behind the plate tonight. 29 year veteran, World Series in 96, 99, 2004, 09, and 2012. Jerry. Has been around out of St. Louis, very active in uh, Big Brothers, Big Sixers, and the Make a Wish Foundation. Two ball, one strike count. Jerry's noted for, if anything, maybe uh, leaning towards the strike zone that's a little small. Generally, uh, hitters considered a hitter's umpire. Well, if we went over and uh, visited with Jose Reyes right at the you moment, see that's one vote. That would be one vote the other way. I'm, I'm with you. I, he, he would vote the other way on that. Yeah, he's he <laughs> still has a lot of angst about because he thought I'm going down to first and I could maybe steal a base. Uh, Two one delivery to Kawasaki. Breaking ball is going to be in there for a strike. Yeah, it's been a kind of a year where. Last year, M Miguel Gonzalez with nine wins, four losses, 325 ERA. Had a real good slider, so maybe he will use what he just did, which is throw his curveball. and be a good one. 2-2 Two -two delivery on a heater that's going to miss upstairs. Kawasaki, who can take pitches, does so there. You see the number against the Orioles, 313. 
home run, eight RBIs in this big series he's had with the five for eight, and he's got a three game hit streak as well. He'll take the pitch inside, and that will be ball four. Judiciously acting, watching the call, and he's on it first. Now take a look at the Oriola defense. Uh, Preeti Jones, Marcakis, that's your outfield. Uh, Jason played center field last night with Jonesy taking the night off in center. Valencia Hardy Scope Pierce, who hit the home run, and then Matt Weeders back in the lineup. Jeff Clevenger did a nice job behind the plate last night for the Orioles. So there is Valencia, who's been uh, largely used as a DH on the season, getting the start at third base, his first of the year at third. One down, runner on. And the delivery to Lowry will be taken for a strike. Lowry going through a tough finish at the moment. Brett's had the 0 for 8 in this series, and he's not had a hit in his last 15 at bats. And he comes up against Gonzalez. He's only 2 for 13, lifetime against the Orioles starter. Here's the 0 1 delivery on the way, and a swing and a miss, and a pitch down and away. Yeah, he's really gotten pitched to. And, um, and when he has hit a ball hard, first game, hit a, I mean, hit a screamer, but right to J.J. Hardy for double play. It's pretty much the only way you can double him up because he runs really well. And you can see right there, last four games, nice little 0 for 15 will get you into Lancia. And now we'll just miss inside. How do you not swing at that pitch? I actually thought ball four for Kawasaki was a better pitch than he called Reyes out on. And the next time there may be even a pitch a little further <laughs> away. Big lead. Kawasaki's just stepped off an extra step over there at first base. Gonzalez, there goes the runner, and the ball is going to be popped up. It'll be back near the screen and over the screen. Kawasaki was almost forced to take off. With each pitch Gonzalez threw, he was stepping off an extra half step. And on that last one, Gonzalez wasn't thrown over there. Kawasaki had a step larger than you'll see almost anyone get, so he had to run. Yeah, I think uh, John Gibbons, uh, when you get Batista with 28 home runs, Encarnacion with 36, and then, I mean, Linda not playing tonight either, 23, and then you got, uh, what, uh, Rasmus with 23. You better do some running. Fouled away. I mean, this is a triple-A lineup yeah. you're looking at for Toronto. They've got they've got Reyes, Lowry, Aaron Sebia, who's in and out as catcher. But other than that, these are not regular starters in this lineup for Toronto. It's like that they, doesn't mean they're not good players, yeah. but they're not starters. It's like they came over from Dunedin to Sarasota. Yeah, that's right. Training. Yep. One ball, two strike count, one away. Kawasaki faked the goal last time. Gonzalez still hasn't thrown. Now he will. Kawasaki seven out of eight stealing bases. And the one thing about Miguel, you do not run on him very often. Five stolen attempts, and this is his what 29th start, 28th start actually. And only two successful. Yeah. And leaders behind the plate with a 35 percent mark. Runner not going here. Lowry will punch that one down the line the other way, and that too is going to end up in the seats. So a couple of at bats that have eaten up some pitches here by Kawasaki and now by Lowry is up to uh, 18 thrown yeah, and only two hitters uh, have uh, left the batter's box. Yeah to uh, a typical inning for Miguel is right around 16 pitches per inning. One ball two strike count. Runner not going. That ball is going to be hit to center Jones. We'll get over in the alley a little bit and put it away. Lowry is retired today. Well, take a look uh, again. This is last year. I mean, terrific year. Low ERA slider. They hit 250 this year. Said it's been a little bit lazier. Fastball last year lower. Fastball this year up. And it's not that he has pitched poorly. He struggled in August. The Orioles struggled in July. But again, the seven and three start. And that was even with that finger blister that uh, put him on the DL for a couple or actually missed a couple of starts for about 12 days. And here is Sierra. Well, I say Sierra played in one game of the two here in this series. A couple of at bats, 0 for 2. Sierra's had uh, three hits and 11 at bats this year against the Orioles, getting the start in right field. 1 0 delivery on the way, and he'll put that one up in the air. He had to pull the arms back in, so he didn't get much on it. Friday will come over and drop it. And the run's going to score. Throw to the plate. 
is not in time as it bounces off the mound. He did not have control of it and just dropped it. And Toronto gets a 1-0 lead. Now, Sierra hurts his ankle on uh, Monday night. Or actually, make it Tuesday night. And it just in, into the heel of the glove. I mean, routine. Kawasaki, this is what he does. They love him up in Toronto, hustling all the way. Boy, if you assume this is going to be caught, and right there, you can see Luis Rivera, third base coach, sending him in. So an extra out. Friday getting the start in left field in the ball game and a costly error the 51st of the year for the Orioles. And a swing and a miss. I mean following it right into the glove and then not staying in the web because they never hit the web right off the heel. Yeah, just in the heel of the glove and Sierra should have been on second base. Yes. So that's a break for the Orioles obviously unlucky for Miguel Gonzalez. And the big swing and a miss as Ghost. He's had a couple of hits here in the series, going two for nine with an RBI. He's got two home runs on the year. Ghost has faced Gonzalez in eight at bats and has gone three for eight. 0 2 count on him. A run in unearned with Kawasaki scoring, and he got on via the walk. And a swing and a miss on the pitch up high. So Gonzalez gets a couple of strikeouts, a run on earned, picked up on uh, no hits and error, and one left on. Long way to the other end of the dugout for Jason. I mean, nobody wished that hadn't happened any more than him. Watch Buck come out. He sees him coming. He's going to go down underneath, so he gets out of camera view, and Buck sees it and goes, eh, Get me out of here. <laughs> Didn't get hurt down there. That's where all the activity takes place. Take a look at the starting lineup. It'll be Roberts, Marquegas, Valencia, Jones, Weeders, Hardy, Pierce, Brady, and uh, Jonathan Scope gets his second start. Here is Brian Roberts leading it off. Roberts the DH in the leadoff spot with a 292 lifetime average off Burley. And uh, here is numbers loving uh, lucky 13 uh, 13 straight years to 100 innings 10 wins 30 starts very consistent loves to get the ground ball 58 percent of the time and then how about a 186 141 3.84 ERA so very solid gives you a chance to win hold runners one goal gloves. Does a lot of things. Struggled early on the road, one and five early on, four and five collectively, but on a roll, three and oh, two point five eight in his last six starts. Two two delivery. Yeah. And if you're gonna talk, talk quickly when Burley gets the ball back, it throws it right back to the catcher. You don't have any time to say anything. No time to get in numbers, no time to get in stats. We love Mark Burley. Three two delivery. That'll be looped to right field. That's gonna fall in for a base hit. Or you've seen a lot of those against them. That time Brian Roberts gets one Sierra gets it back in. 
So the Orioles get the leadoff man on. Time for our AT&T mobility trivia fact. Nick Marquegas. Look at the numbers that he has against Martin Burley. Fourth highest average of any player against this 34 year old veteran. So that little looper we uh, Josh Thole said I'm going you know who caught last night got four hits along with Kawasaki he said I think I'm going to hang him up for the rest of the year. I'd like to go out on a good note. <laughs> it's a good First, idea. He said that right in front of his manager <laughs> just in case John Gibbons had any idea but he a couple of them were just like that. Yes. And that is the way I'm not saying you have to hit him that softly. And the Orioles have done a great job because this is the third start. I mean, they get three home runs in their last start uh, against Burley. But you got to stay on the ball. You got to make him throw the ball by you because his average fastball is 84.15 miles per hour. Cutters, curveballs, every pitch he throws, change ups, everything over 60 percent. He is a control artist. 0 and 2 against the Orioles this year, seven and seven lifetime, and we're not kidding about how quickly he works. He's the second quickest worker. Toronto's got both of them. R.A. Dickey is the fastest. That's going to go to the right side. A one and a two. So Marquez will hit into the double play. Well, let's start with the infield after Ryan Goins uh, making a nice little double play. Langerhans comes out of the minor legs. Goins, Reyes, Lowry, Aaron Sebia doing the catching. Pilar goes and Sierra. Sierra took a little divot out and writes. Right, deep right center field the other night and had to leave the game, so he's back. And that is your defense for the uh, the Jays behind the ground ball pitcher. They are tied for 12th in defense in the league, 109 errors they've committed. The Orioles now with 51. Danny Valencia gets the start at third base. Valencia has had an at bat 0 for 1 in the two games. And uh, just to finish off the thought about Burley, if you're wondering about the time. He takes 18.2 seconds between pitches. That ball down the line, left field, towards the corner, near the wall, and right off the top of it. Valencia on his way to second base. Pilar will get it in, and he's got a double, and he missed a home run by the length of a ballpark frank. Yeah, a little cut fastball, and then when you're hot, you're hot. Boy, you just react to the ball. Where's the bat head? Watch this, little cutter. And it's inside. Maybe not inside as much as he wants, but he gets the good part of the bat, fits it to the short part of the ballpark, and where's the bun? Just misses a home run to tie it up. Would have tied it up. Now it's up to Adam Jones. So a runner on at second base. Orioles now the two hits in the inning, but the double play to get rid of that leadoff batter. One for five in the series for Adam. We got to sit out last night. Back in the lineup tonight, ended his uh, streak, 322 consecutive games that he had played in, every one of them this year. And you had to go back into 2011. In fact, it was exactly on the same date that uh, he missed his last game. And that ball will go to short on the big hop. Reyes has got it, finds the handle, and will record the out. No runs on two hits, no errors, and one left on base. Toronto's got the lead.
for Sunday, and there could be changes. The wild card, uh, that would be the Indians and the Rays. The division, it would be the Tigers taking on the A's, and the wild card would go up against the Red Sox. The National League wild card, it would be the Reds and the Pirates. They're going to play each other this weekend for three. And the division, Dodgers at the Braves, and the wild card at the Cardinals. Now, all of that setting with the Cardinals, Reds, and Pirates in the Central is not going to be affected tonight. None of them are playing. They will pick up tomorrow. And Texas is going to have something to say about the uh, American League as they are still in the mix. Yeah, the they got one of the hottest teams in baseball the, uh, playing the Angels the last four games of the year. Yep. The Angels have put up the uh, put up the numbers 23 and 9 since August 23. Slow ground ball by Aaron Sebia goes to third. Lancia will make a play. And CB is retired, one away in the second inning. You can win a hitting lesson with Adam Jones. You can, you can. Join Masson's Touch 'em All Rewards for your chance to win the grand prize. Just go to MassonSports.com to sign up. Here is Langerhans coming to the plate. Langerhans played some uh, minor league ball this season. 64 games with Buffalo, hit 221, 404 slugging percentage there. He's been signed, released, and signed again by the same team. They signed him as a free agent, the Blue Jays did last Feb last uh, December, and then they released him in June. Then they signed him again in August. And then he went down to the minor leagues, and then he went home. He was on his way to a hunting trip when the phone rang, and they said, uh, we need you to come play some more baseball. So yeah, here he yeah. is. After that, uh, Colby Rasmus uh, getting hit in the uh, freight by yeah. a, uh, actually a warm-up throw from his uh, fellow outfielder Anthony Gauze and of course he can play first base where he's playing tonight he can play the outfield. We so saw him never know there. that gets away and that is not a foul ball. Weeders has got to get him and does. Well wow, nice play all around. I mean great pitch little splitter that just the bottom dives drops right out of it and that's why it's going to go by Weeders but that ball should be blocked. I mean uh, and then he gets lucky but it's a good throw. It's a nice little target by Steve Pierce. You can see a little bit with Matt Weeders all the innings uh, because we've seen him not block balls that he normally does over the last uh, week or so. And why, well, you know, he can tell you he feels good, but he, he just balls getting by him that just normally don't. I mean, what an arduous schedule he's had behind the plate for all these games. And it's only human nature. Yeah. The, I mean, they're not in the race anymore. Your body and your mind are going to let down a little bit. You can't help it. Yeah. I think it'll key up over the weekend because they, yeah. you know, they know they're three big games with the Red Sox. And, and a ground ball fouled off. Red Sox are already in town. Day off in Baltimore. The uh, Red Sox right now have 96 wins. Detroit's got 93 and Oakland's got 94. You're looking to pick up the most wins in the American League in order to have that home field advantage. Red Sox with a two game advantage over Oakland at the moment. Here's the 0 2 delivery on the way right off the end of the bat. Gonzalez. And he'll play it there himself and retires the side. So a clean inning for Miguel, who sets him down in order. An honored run on the board, the only one Toronto leads.
Orioles will have Matt Wieters to lead it off. Hardy and then Pierce. Stare down underway. Burley staring at second base umpire Ron Culpa because he's ready to pitch. But Culpa's got the clock for commercial breaks and won't <laughs> let him start. <laughs> that will go on all night with Burley. And the pitch is taken for a strike. Leaders comes in with a four game hit streak, including the two for five in a game played in this series. And the pitch outside is five for 18, lifetime off Burley. Burley with 186 wins, 141 losses in his career. He is truly one of the workhorses of the modern baseball age, as he is a 200 innings eater upper. He's now recorded over 10 wins, 30 starts, and 200 innings for the 13th straight season. That ball's not going to stay in the yard. Way back in left. Goodbye, home run, Matt Waiters. And Waiters ties the ball game up at one. Number 22 for Matt. Who gets his 77th RBI? Well, the Orioles, uh, they got out this night last night. Nine runs, four home runs. So that's the curveball. Actually, one of the lower averages he has, but he just hangs it. Check this out. Where do you want it, Mr. Weeters? Right down the middle, and he clobbers it. Off the bat, it's gone. 23 home runs. Coming in, add another to it. Eight of those have been hit by lefties. And the Orioles get the ball game tied up on their third hit of the game. Matt Wieters, his first career home run off Burley. Pitch taken down low by Hardy. J.J. Hardy, two ball, one strike count. Well, the 12th of July, he gave up three home runs. Hadn't done that well, since 2006. That was against the Orioles, and, and it was here. That one in the air to go to right, Sierra. Comes back to where he was, puts it away, and Hardy is retired. Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game as Michael Quick. Michael, you've already won 500 for being selected. You get 100 more for every Orioles hit and an extra 500 for any Orioles home run in the fifth inning. For the latest information on new games, current promotions, and second chance contests, visit mdlottery.com. Here's Steve Pierce, and he'll take the pitch. And did not go around. Ball one. Steve has had a long ball in this series. A couple of hits, three of bats. That ball's going to go to center field and deep. It is way back there. It'll take a hop off the bottom of the wall. Ghost will make the throw into second base and in with a double is Pierce. Yeah, cut fastball that stays up. And you can see he goes in, the ball goes away. Well, all you have to do is look at his facial expression. He knew it was hit hard. He knew where his center fielder was playing. And he wasn't playing where that ball landed. The home run last night for Steve Pierce. Down at the cage today. How's the wrist? Much, much better. So another runner in scoring position for the Orioles. They went three for 11 in the ball game last night with runners in scoring position. Friday gets a chance at redemption and the pitch will be taken down low. Error charge to him allowed the honor and run Toronto has on the board. He can pick that one right up. Here. 0 1 count. Friday getting a chance at the left hander Burley and the pitch will be taken down low. And asked for the new baseball. Yeah, one out of four lefties against Burley with seven home runs. So right hand is a little higher. 29 points higher with more home runs. Here's the 1 1 delivery on the way. This is outside with it. This is not an atypical start. Burley gives up a lot of hits, six most in the league. He gives up a lot of runs, eighth most in the league. He's still 12 and 9. And the team's 19 and 13 in his starts. That's going to miss a little bit outside. And the count goes to 3 and 1. No Burley falling behind first base open. Jonathan Scope waiting on deck batting in the nine spot. Pierce good lead at second base. 
Three one delivery. That's going to be a base hit into left field. Pilar will play it on the second hop runner held by Bobby Dickerson at third. And the Orioles cover the corners with the one down here in the second inning. Well, Jonathan Scope gets his second chance. He won't forget his first one. As last night, he made his major league debut playing at second base, and he started it out with a base hit. He would follow it up in the ball game with his first major league home run. And it was belted. Back, Mike Griffin, Triple uh, A pitching coach, up with the big club uh, here, and then uh, Josh Stinson, who pitched down there. They said, "Do you think that ball would have gone out of Norfolk?" And it was debatable, mm -hmm. which is hard to believe. It kind of gives you an idea. They're going to bring the fences in. Ron Johnson also on Buck Showalter staff, the Triple A manager, said they are going to bring the fences in in Norfolk, so it'll be a much fairer hitting ballpark. But that ball was hit so far and so quickly last night. Yet down at Triple A, gives you an idea how big that park is. Scope with runners at first and third, and a swing and a miss on Burley. Most teams now in the Orioles, if Buck Showalter has his way, trying to find their minor league ballparks to the dimensions of the major league ballpark. They want the guys coming up through the organization, knowing what the park feels like, looks like, make it as much like at least the playing field part of it, like Camden Yards as you can. That is a foul ball. Good heads up base running there, though. Pierce and Pridey both moving just in case. And I think Aaron Tivia gets it on the backswing. Jenkins already warming up. Chad Jenkins he had a big sinker baller. That'd be very interesting. I mean, John, Jonathan Scope. I mean, this is you know last night fastballs. Uh, he, he did a double play ball on a slider. So you're getting a finesse guy that is going to try to trick you, get you out on your front foot. And he's got a great move, folks. Yeah. Really has thrown a couple hundred innings. That's why John Gibbons will be careful here about any kind of extending him. I mean, he's used to going. Pretty deep in the ball games, but at this point, if he's in trouble. They're going to get him out. High speed pitch, runner coming. They'll go to second one, relay over to first. That's a nice double play. Well turned right there. The Orioles will get a run on three hits, no errors, and a base runner left on Matt Weeders. Leading off the second inning, delivers his 22nd home run and ties the ball game up. Home of Orioles Spring Training, also a destination for culinary adventure from the fresh local seafood to the array of Zagat rated restaurants. And you can learn more by going to SaverSarasota.com. Temperatures in the spring training home continue to be up around 88, 89 daily and down to the low 70s. Yeah, as you get, get into October, what it gets down into uh, kind of like Palm Beach, you get into the uh, high 80s and it drops from what 92 to 88. And that perfect weather. Yeah. Which it's really been here along the East Coast uh, around Baltimore. It was a gorgeous day today. Kevin Pilar will lead it off. Pilar's had a one for nine in the series, batting ninth, playing in left. He'll take it up high 
for a ball. Yeah, that uh, one base hit a screaming double over the head of Ryan Flaherty, who played third base last night after the Machado uh, knee injury on Monday. 1 0 delivery. Pilar will follow it back. The Orioles are trying to win the season series for the second year in a row. They were 11 and 7 against Toronto last year, and for the Orioles, it was the first time they had won a season series since 2004 against the Toronto Blue Jays. To make it two in a row if they can win tonight. Pitch is taken down low, and a two ball, one strike count. Yeah, kind of a lot of first uh, last year. The, the Orioles were 13 and five against the the Red Sox. 45 wins against the American League East. The winning road record. That's so how you win 93. Inside. Yeah. Yeah, and that East record, as we've pointed out, a troublesome point for the Orioles this season. There's nowhere near the record they had against the East last year. They've got a chance here for this victory, and then. Uh, Against Boston for a season series. Another hard hit ball, center field base hit. So Pilar is on with a leadoff single here in the third inning. Tomorrow, help us paint the park orange. It's the final weekend of the regular season, and it starts with a fireworks night. Beautiful post game fireworks display. Red Sox game at 7.05, and then that's what you'll enjoy. Get your tickets in advance and save at 888-848-BIRD or go to Orioles.com. So leadoff man on. Top of the order. Reyes strikeout victim first time up. And he'll take the pitch away for a ball. The Orioles this season are 33 and 39 against the East. Toronto's 28 and 44. Against Eastern teams. That record against the East obviously has cost the Orioles a bit, not being able to pick up the season series they did last year. That'll be played the first, and it gets away. And a good backup by Weeders will hold the runner at second base. Pilar thought about going as it got away, but he'll stay, and Reyes is on. Yeah, he tries to do what left handed hitters do off right handed pitchers, first base uh, hole. Thinking about it right there, and when he does, and then it's uh, just a low throw. Pierce, who plays the outfield, plays first base. Probably a ball that, uh, and this is, gives you an indication how good Chris Davis has been. Probably picks that. Two but errors on the Orioles in the game. They've got out a ball game where they've had more than three this year. Already one on earn run allowed. Now two on, nobody out. Here's Kawasaki. He drew a walk his first time up. Orioles are going to play him to bunt. In at first and third with Valencia and Pierce. He does. And it's foul. Kawasaki with nine sacrifices. He's the leader on this Toronto team in that department. Trying to put two in scoring position if he can get a bunt down. So the uh, with the two errors, they're now at 52 and the, the Rays with 56. And that what lowest ever was the Mariners 2003 with 65. Does square pops it up. The Orioles get a break right there. Weeders puts it away. Yeah, I think they called an infield fly rule on the pop up. Otherwise, you let it drop. Yep. Good Last, heads up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, perfect fun on Tuesday. It allows them to uh, win it in the tenth inning, and then right here just. High fastball. That's what you're taught. Couldn't get the uh, the angle of the bat properly and just pops it up. So there's one away. Now the infield will back up. Number three hitter Brett Laurie, bowl for his last 16, stands in with an RBI chance. Boy, they had chances last night. Four for 22, with runners in scoring position in the ball game last night. Four. Toronto in the Orioles nine to five win. Well, it could have easily been a nine to nine game. I mean, all they have to do is get a couple of and, and Lowry is one of the guys that you know you talked about all night long and uh, plenty of opportunities. And now he's what 0 for 16. He's struggling 0 for 16, 0 for 9 in this series. And that's surprising because he has such great speed. I mean, routine ground balls aren't routine with him running, and he usually uses the whole field. 0-2 delivery to him. He'll take the pitch up high. 
Lowry on the year hitting just 228 with runners in scoring position a very low number for a player right in the middle of that order all season long. Here's the one two delivery to him he takes that towards center Jones going back that ball carries. Adam puts it away runners will stay and there are two away. Oh, he backspinned it a little slider that just stays up after he swung through one and. He's probably thinking now I'm 0 for 17. I hit that ball pretty well, mm -hmm. which he did. But it was tracked down by Adam Jones. Lowry who at 278 last year with runners in scoring position, or 275, comes into this ball game at 228. So that number's really dropped off for him. Yeah, his whole average home runs the same, but the average is down about 28 points this year. So Sierra will try and get it done with two away, two on, and Gonzalez a chance to get out of the inning again. And the pitch will be taken for a ball. Pilar with a leadoff single. He's on at second base. And Reyes reaching on the air is on at first. Good speed on the base pass for the Jays. Sierra reached on an error. His first at bat. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Gonzalez, a chopper up the middle. Hardy's there. Flip to second. Jonathan Scope tags the bag, and that's the inning. So no runs, one hit, one error. Two are left on base. Game tied, 1-1. One, one. Visit VWDealer.com. It was a big day, September 26. Jesse Burkett in 1896 became the first player to hit 400 in back to back seasons. He's a Hall of Famer. 98, Dennis Seckersley broke the ML record. 1,071st game pitch. Albert Pools in 07, the first major leaguer with 30 plus home runs and 100 plus RBIs in his first seven years. And Vladimir Guerrero playing for the Orioles became the all time Dominican born hit leader, 2,587 all. On this date. And the pitch taken up high. Roberts a single his first time up. Arcagas and Valencia to follow. 1 0 delivery, and that'll be taken away. 2 0. So uh, B Rob uh, with uh, home runs, didn't play last night, but home runs in his last two games. And Burley's probably aware of that. Said one up, home yeah. run off Burley, a lot of at bats. These two veterans have. Faced each other a lot. 3 0 delivery taking, it's a strike. Much discussion will be about Brian Roberts as soon as the season ends. It's already started. That'll be bunted. Lowry can't get him. Bunt single. Well, don't see it very often, but this is the soon to be 36 year old Brian Roberts, 3 and 1, you know, the double master. Really hadn't played over the last three years because of various injuries. What a heads up play. We saw Tampa Bay do it against the Orioles. Nobody's playing in. If you're Lowry and he makes a nice play, as does Longer Hounds. But here it is. I mean, he's been all over the place in this series. Makes it close. But he gets it down and kind of sets up the inning. 
So the Orioles get the lead off and on. Marquegas hit into a double play his first time up. Brian's two for two in the ball game. And the Orioles have had six hits. And have had a couple of double plays. Take those hits off the board. That's going to be the left, and that's going to be a base hit. And it's going to go all the way to the wall. Pillar tried to cut it off and didn't get there. Roberts will make the turn. He's going to score. Double Marquez and the Orioles have a two to one lead. Yeah, we've seen a couple of balls. Goins hit one out there that made a left turn. This one, I think, uh, Pillar newly to the big leagues. The, the ball slicing. Thinks he can cut it off, and he can't. And then it gets by him. It becomes uh, an extra base hit. Play in front of Brian knows he's probably going to get to third. And then it gets by him. He's going all the way home. Make it two to one. And Nick Marquez picks up his 59th RBI of the season. And will get a double to go with it. Pilar just misplaying. No error there. Just didn't get the angle he needed. And Valencia coming up. Valencia had a double. Orioles seven hits in the game. That will be fouled away. And Danny, I think, trying to take a shot to right. And that's the way you have to hit Burley anyway. I know he doubled him, just missed a home run, but you got Adam Jones on deck, getting 360 something off of Burley. Get him to third base. Take a shot to right. And you can see a nice little uh, September going, well over 300. He and Hardy have had the best of it at the plate in September for the Orioles. Pitch will be taken inside. Valencia with his double in the first inning. Now has seven hits and 24 at bats lifetime against Burley. Seven and seven. Burley's lifetime mark against the Orioles. The Orioles have touched him up though for some big numbers this year. That first start he had was here at Camden Yards. He gave up eight runs on nine hits and six innings. Jim mentioned the three home runs that he surrendered and then. On the 15th of this month in Toronto, he gave up three runs, two earned, six hits over five, and it was only the third time he'd pitched less than six innings. One ball, two strike count. Valencia trying to get an RBI, and that's going to be in there for a strike. Burley's going to get his first strikeout. Big one. Valencia can't get him over. Certainly tried on the first pitch and then early. I mean, just think about it. This is really your 14th year. It came up well, all the way back in 2000, but 2001st, your first full year. He got the two strikes by throwing something soft that he couldn't hit the right field. And that was strike two, and then he made a great pitch. Now, with the runner at second and one away, he's got to face Jones. Adam grounded out his first time up. Chopper. Lowry's going to be tested again. Nope. Base hit. Burley went over. Lowry was deep and a swinging bunt. And Jones is on first and third, one away. Yeah, he had every intention. And he, you know, Gall Glover, of catching that ball and making the play at first. This is very Jim Cott like. who won 16 straight. Left handed, big left hander. And then right there, the transfer couldn't make it. Very much what happened to uh, Jonathan uh, Scope when he couldn't transfer the ball and ended up throwing it away at first base just last inning. So Adam Jones picks up the infield hit. The Orioles now have 164 infield hits this year, and Adam is their leader. He's got 29 infield hits on the season. And another chance for leaders. Matt delivered the home run in the second inning, his 22nd. He's now six for 19 lifetime off Gurley. That was the first home run that he has had off the left hander. And they play him the pull. Huge hole into right field. Matt batting right this year. 277 coming in. He's now got 11 home runs right and 11 home runs left. That ball's way up in the air. Should get a run in at third. We'll see. Arcagas will tag. Pilar's got it. Show me your arm. Yeah, well. Off the mark and he's in. And meanwhile, Adam Jones gets into scoring position. So he misplays a single into a double and then makes a horrible throw. If you're John Gibbons, you got to go, please. Uh, we got to give him some reality meal money. No possible way of throwing him out, and he tries to do it. 
you know. I'm sure they will talk to him. I mean, you got yeah. you got your first base coach, Dwayne Murphy. Uh, he, he won six goals, gloves, one of the great center fielders in the American League in, in my year. So they'll have a little conversation. And Matt's got a two RBI game. And Waiters now is 78 on the year. And another runner in scoring position. And the pitch taken for a strike by Hardy. Hardy flied out to right field his first time up. So it's the Orioles tonight who are piling up the chances of runners in scoring position in the game against Burley. They've got a three to one lead. Two down. That'll be a chopper. Wow, they just keep coming. Laurie's got to do it again. This time he's got time and is able to make the play. But the Orioles have a two run inning. They do it on three hits. One left on base take a three one lead. Gary Thorne and Jim Palmer here at Camden Yards tonight. Orioles with three left against the Red Sox. The series will start tomorrow night. It'll be Scott Feldman against Clay Buckholz. Wei in Chen, John Lester in game two. Chris Tillman scheduled to start. That could change, but scheduled to start, wants to start on Sunday, and John Lackey would be his opponent. So they'll tune up uh, for their postseason and also, of course, preeminent in their mind, John Farrell's. Um, ben Sherrington, the, gen the general manager, is hey, how do we get ready? How do we get home field advantage? That is going to be huge. Yep. Anthony goes coming up, goes a strikeout victim his first time up. Miguel Gonzalez with a three to one lead as we go to the fourth inning. The Orioles three, eight, and two. The Jays have one unearned run on one hit, and they have left three on base. Aaron Sebia. Langer Hans to follow. 0 1 delivered. The Orioles come into today's play tied with the Yankees for third. Identical records, 82 wins and 76 losses. The Yankees are playing Tampa Bay again. No score early on in that ballgame. 1 1 delivery ripped hard and foul. Now, yeah, when Miguel is on his game, uh, he's got the splitter. I've already seen the curveball. We've actually seen a couple of good sliders tonight, but. He can pitch in on lefties about as well as anybody on this team. There's his pitching coach, uh, Billy Castro, started the season as the bullpen coach. Now Scotty McGregor out in the pen with the Orioles. One two delivery roller. In the six career starts against Toronto, Gonzalez three and two here at Camden Yards. He's two and zero oh against Toronto with a three four six ERA. As a starter for the Orioles, he's gone 19 and 12. This is his 43rd start. 1 2 delivery, and the fastball is going to be up, probably away. With a very low earned run average. Very low. Three and three quarter runs per game. No good numbers for Gonzalez. He certainly has been a surprise with the extent of his success. And can field. 
And he got the pitch selection for young hitters, and that's what goes is. And you know, he gives him enough fastball, stays out of the middle plate, and then throws him a splitter. And it goes straight down, and you get a routine little grounder right back to you. One away here in the fourth inning. He gets 72 percent of leadoff batters have been retired by Gonzalez. Good number in this ball game. One for four for Toronto. Leadoff men on. There's J.P. Aaron Sebia. Aaron Sebia grounded out his first time up and 0 for five so far in the series. And he will take the pitch for a strike. And uh, he has had a two for 12 off Gonzalez. Yeah, really having a tough season. I mean, a bunch of home runs under 200. You can see this 18 games, uh, 070. Hmm. And that was the big article. Alex Anthopoulos, the uh, general manager, was here yesterday. They said they need to upgrade their catching position. 229 on base percentage. That's 30 points lower than anybody else in baseball. More errors, most. More pass balls, so you can see why he's saying that. Ball will be popped up right field. Mike Takas will come in and put it away. Two down, fourth inning. On Saturday, Oriole fans will have several chances to create a one of a kind Birdland memory. Part of Fan Appreciation Week when the O's host the Red Sox. It'll be Saturday at 7.05. You could earn an on field experience. Be the PA announcer for an inning, hand in the official lineup card, or throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Don't miss your chance to enjoy an unforgettable night. 888 bird or Orioles.com for tickets. That's coming up Saturday in this fan appreciation week. And a real good crowd on hand here for the ball game tonight to finish up the series. Ryan Langerhans starting at first base, a strikeout victim. Gonzalez with a 1 0 delivery to him, and that'll be popped up. Maybe shortstop, maybe left. Hardy, let go. Ball came uh, back on him towards center field, but he was able to haul it in. That is the second clean inning for Gonzalez of the four play. The Orioles have a 3 1 lead. Report is brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever. In you, uh, down to the Instructional League, uh, your number one draft choice. Um, actually, threw the ball very well. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, in Aberdeen, actually lost. I think what one nothing, maybe in one of the, the final games as they tried to uh, to win their division. So power arm, they love him. Apparently, throws a lot of strikes. Something I didn't do when I was coming up to a ball. So good luck. Stay healthy. Luck. Stay healthy. That's the key. Steve Pierce leading it off. Ow. Burley knocks it down. Gets he out. Is he all right? Well, Drabeck took it off the right ankle. Nice approach, and here they come again. And this is a BB. Gold Glover. Can't get the glove down. You just can't do it. I mean, you turn a little bit. Makes a nice play, so. There's that little follow through. Most lefties have it. 
So it will be the landing calf. And they got him right in the calf. And I've been hit by those. And you feel them. And then the adrenaline is that hey, doesn't really hurt that much, but hurts enough when you don't want to hurt somebody when uh, you got them under contract for another two years. So we'll take a look. Yeah, somewhere up there, calf below the the right knee. So Burley, you saw John Gibbons, the manager, going out, and he was just like, "Come on, let's let's go. We're not going to take any chances here with you, and uh, let's just call it a season, wrap it up right here." So they'll go to the bullpen, and uh, they'll have as much time as they need here to get their reliever ready. Activity he undertakes before each game while the Orioles are taking batting practice. He goes into the outfield, usually with a bat in hand, and he walks around and he stops and he talks and he chats. I had a chance to ask Buck about this. What's going on with this pregame walk you take every day? I've got a little list of guys I want to talk to. Mostly the guys I think might be mad or might be not mad, it's the wrong word, maybe not in the right frame of mind because of something whether I've done or they've done or the game's done to them or what have you. And health, there's a million things, but I have a mental checklist. In fact, I do it on paper before I go out and I come back in and make sure I've hit all of them. And that's probably one of the most important things I do all day. And I hate to talk about it because I don't want it to, I want to give it up. So, but I enjoy it. I enjoy the interaction. And, uh, and then there's not a time goes by where I don't do it and laugh and, Keep a grip on reality and what's going on with these guys, and and kind of live through them. See what they're feeling. Try to get a tenor of what's going on and what I need to be more on top of. It is fun to watch him every day do that, and it is really one of the only times. I mean, you think, hey, he's the manager, they're the players, but when they get here and are in a clubhouse, everybody's around. There's press in at times, or meetings going on. That's the one real kind of downtime, Jim, where he's got a chance to just kind of chat. Yeah, John Gibbons was talking, uh, the Toronto manager was talking about the fact that uh, Major League Baseball dictates you have to meet with the press twice every day. So that takes up your time. You, you can't just stroll through the locker room because you're talking to the press, you're talking to your coaches, you're talking to your you know, vice president, executive vice president of baseball operations, Dandy. I mean, you've got a lot of stuff going on. And um, I just remember when he first came here, remember when Jerry Jeremy Guthrie, who used to, Stanford grad, used to say, he's. He called me over, middle of the game, asked me questions. I had no idea how to answer. <laughs> so he keeps you on your toes, and and obviously, you know, I and I, and I you know, I'm talking about Earl Weaver. Earl would actually walk through the locker room and not talk to anybody, and he wasn't coming to visit you. <laughs> he would, but it's it just everybody has a different style, and I I think it's terrific. Yeah, I do too. It's, I think the players really appreciate it. I thought it know. was kind of interesting. But, you know, Earl used to say, "Hey, but the door is always open." Don't always come in when I don't want to talk to you. But, <laughs> but I think Buck was kind of alluding to that is, you know, they're mad at the game or mad at me or annoyed or whatever the case is. And he just makes himself very 
I guess what's the word I want? Uh, yeah, well, he's not only sociable, but very available yeah. to his players. Very and, uh, available. And you got to know your players. I mean, you got to you want to know what they're thinking. Yeah. Maybe not all the time, but I mean, most of the <laughs> time. You you wanna, yeah, you want to have you an do. idea what's going Good or on. Bad. Yeah. So Burley's out of there with the injury after being uh, hit on the calf of the leg. That line drive, three and a third. Eight hits, charged with the three runs and a strikeout, and that will be his final line. Chad Jenkins on to do the pitching. Call up from New Hampshire, double A ball. He'll work here with the bases empty. Pridey coming up, picked up a single in his first at bat. One down. Shows bunt, drops one. Back to the mound. And a good fastball. Pridey with good speed <laughs> yeah. getting down there. That was close. And there are a couple out here in the fourth inning. Fan Appreciation Week concludes on Sunday. Final game of the regular season, 135 against the Red Sox. On Sunday, the first 25,000 fans, 15 and over, will receive the Chris Davis AT&T Fans Choice bobblehead. All gates open at 11.30 to accommodate the anticipated early arriving crowd. Great tickets, 888-848-BIRD at Orioles.com. That's going to be on Sunday, the final game of the regular season. Jonathan Scope, two down, nobody on. Hit into a double play his first time up. And a swing and a miss and a pitch inside. Yeah, nice little change up, sinker change up, little breaking ball for Chad Jenkins. Jenkins getting a little uh, cup of coffee here. He started in the Gulf Coast League actually and then moved up to New Hampshire for a double A and was recalled from New Hampshire on August 24. Overall, he went uh, through the three different ball clubs going 0 and 3, 4.5 ERA, 11 games, 10 starts. Swing and a miss. If he's here, you may not have heard much about him, but somebody in Toronto likes him. This is when you get a look see. Well, he throws a lot of strikes and uh, has throughout his career. 2 2 delivery and a swing and a miss. And Scopes retired in a 1 2 3 inning. So the starter Burley out, Jenkins in. Orioles have a three to one lead. The ball game. The bird wants a win, and early on, an unearned run would be scored. Even though Gonzalez would pick up three strikeouts, Weeders would answer that. He delivered the home run, his 22nd in the second inning. Marquez an RBI, and then Weeders again on a sack fly to bring him home. And the Orioles have him dancing in the aisles. Three to one. Evan Longoria has got an RBI against the Yankees tonight, and. Uh, Tampa Bay has got a one nothing lead. Cobb's given up just one hit in three innings. Nova five hits and four for the Yankees. Tampa Bay ahead of Cleveland in the two wild card spots. Texas just one game out from the second wild card spot held by Cleveland. Ryan Goings up and a swing and a miss. Goings, Pilar, and Reyes. 
And we get into that territory uh, where Miguel, especially the second half, has had problems, and that's the fifth inning on. And uh, that'll be on the fist popped up. Jonathan Scope at second base calls. Gets it away. So take a look at this is what we were talking about from innings one to four. And the numbers certainly not good. The ERA goes up dramatically. Home run goes up. They almost triple. And uh, Billy Castro, the Oriole pitching coach, says some of it's mechanical. He stops turning, getting closed, getting uh, really kind of set over the pitching rubber, and the other part is mental. But he certainly has the, you know, a lot of guys don't have three or four pitches. He does. So it's a matter of executing your pitches as the game goes along. And a lot of times it's not velocity, it's just command and location. Pilar, the number nine hitter, had a single his first time up. So he's had a couple of hits and ten at bats in the series. The rookie started his major league career with an 0 for 17. Reality set in early. Yeah. Well, he told us, he said, you come to the big leagues, you want to get hits, and then you realize these guys are pretty good. And if I try to hit on their terms, in other words, pitchers, pitches early in the count, and we've seen him when he's had his good at bats, he has worked the count into these counts, hitters' counts. Did it the first time, hit a screamer into center field. 3 1 fastball. Here's the 2 0 delivery by Gonzalez, and the breaking ball will be in there for a strike. And the other thing he made is that, Gary, he said, when a. Until you get to two strikes, if a guy makes what you think is a pitcher's pitch, you're better off taking it because you can't hit it up at this level. 2 1 delivery on the way, and that's a good one. On the outside corner, first strike at the knees, and Pilar. Two ball, two strike count. Well, that's about that's how you pitch late in the ball game. I mean, we're only in the fifth, but you throw that knee high fastball, and then you use your other pitches off it. And Matt Weeders will he throw him three in a row right on the outside corner. So that's up out there, and that's right in the mid. That'll be a little bit outside, though. So the count goes full, three balls and two strikes. Leadoff batter Reyes waiting on deck. Orioles up by two here in the fifth. 3 2 delivery on the way and a little loop for the center. It'll come back towards Adam and he's got it. Two down, fifth inning. Tune into the Mid Atlantic Sports Report. It's on tomorrow, 5 to 6 30. Tom Davis, Mel Anthony, Dave Johnson, Phil Wood. They'll take a look at the biggest storylines of baseball's final weekend before the playoffs get underway. Here, the former Oriole, current Nationals manager, as he reflects back on. His career with just three games remaining, Davey Johnson. All that and more tomorrow at five. Here's Reyes. And the pitch will be taken for a strike on the inside corner. <laughs> Reyes, he wasn't happy about being called out strikes in the first inning, reached on an error in the third. No one delivery to him. Foul back. And the big cut. I think they got the camera. Mm. Clark screwed himself into the ground on that one. Yeah, he doesn't spend a lot of, uh, contrary to most major league hitters, doesn't spend a lot of time out of the box. He is ready to hit. Just a Mark Burley of leadoff. Yes. 0 2 delivery on the way to him. That'll be fouled back. Our type of guy. That's right. Well, that splitter will get him wondering, though. <laughs> He's, well, and that was a pretty good pitch. Happy I fouled it off. Burley left with the right calf contusion. After being hit by a line drive that came back, John Gibbons lost his starter after three and a third. Here's the 0-2 delivery to Reyes, and Reyes will loop that one down the line and left, and that's going to be caught. Yes. Oh, give that girl a contract. Nice catch. Really nice. She's happy, as she should be. So is that youngster. Everybody's happy. <laughs> oh, two count. My Kroko, the ball, babe. That'll be a replay right yeah. there. She'll get to watch that again later. Here's the 0-2 delivery found out. So I, I want to really send along best wishes to Davey Johnson as he finishes up. Davey's one of my favorite people in baseball. I had the great thrill of doing Mets games and Davey was the manager in some great years in the mid-80s and what a wonderful time we had and what a great oh. guy. Well, he shared our first World Series playing second base. We kind of raised our kids together, so we go back a long, long way. Yep. Davis, a great treat yeah. to be around. A real baseball man. 
and off the field uh, very supportive of the baseball assistance team bat. Here's the one two delivery and the pitch will be taken inside two ball two strike count. Yeah they had a little ceremony over at National Park uh, last week and I think Boog did, I did a little video Boog did it. So I texted him I said I can't wait to see what your next job is going to be and he said right now his wife Susan they got him scheduled uh, for Australia. So he said then golf and fishing. I love uh, it. We certainly wish him well. Great terrific guy. Two two deliveries outside. Good at bat here by Reyes with two down nobody on in the fifth inning. Three two count with two away. Gonzalez has walked one struck out three. Giving up just one hit. They sit Pilar in the third inning. Reyes will ground that one to second base. Jonathan scopes up with it. He'll make the play. Gonzalez continues rolling along very effectively. Sets the side down in order. In fact, that's nine in a row. He's retired. game as they finish up against the Jays Gary Thorne Jim Palmer here and for the weekend even though the Orioles are obviously out of any postseason hopes they do have uh, will have an impact on what it's going to look like with the Red Sox coming in so we'll see the starters at least to begin that series. Oh teams. yeah and uh, it'll be a little bit like 2011 when the yeah. Orioles won five out of the last seven uh, at that time the Red Sox just trying to be the wild card team and as it turned out they they lost by one game so. You know, tonight's game, I mean, you know, great story here. Matt Wieters, a third straight year, over 20 home runs, took the lead now for American League catchers with his 22nd home run. And Miguel Gonzalez doing what he's certainly capable of doing. Uh, certainly a tarnished uh, lineup because of injuries, but uh, he's taken advantage of it. Ryan Roberts puts that one out to left field. Go back near the warning track that we hauled in. Blair there to get it. Roberts is retired. He's still two for three in the ballgame. And our fifth inning home run bonus for this inning only our Maryland lottery hit it big contestant of the game receives five hundred dollars for any Orioles home run. Michael Quick has already won thirteen hundred dollars today for all the latest information on new games current promotions and second chance contests visit mdlottery.com. That'll bring up Mike Kekas Nick with an RBI double and he scored a run came in the third inning one for two in the ball game. Chad Jenkins on the mound in relief of Burley. Got the final two outs in the fourth inning. 1 0 pitch. And that's going to be taken. Count goes to 2 0. Cabrera, Miguel Cabrera on his way to another batting title. Chris Davis on his way to the home run title. And uh, Chris and Cabrera are tied for RBIs. That'll go into left field. Pilar to get it. Davis will be back in the lineup tomorrow night for the Orioles. Mark Agus, couple of hits, two for three. When the Orioles win, everyone wins. The Orioles won and scored five or more runs yesterday, which means you get 50% off your regular menu price online orders today. Just enter promo code Orioles5 at PapaJohns.com when you order. 
It's valid. They're participating Baltimore area Papa John's. Just about time to order a pizza. <laughs> Fifty percent off. Valencia has doubled him and called out on strikes. Orioles have their ninth hit already, and the pitch is in there for a strike. Valencia batting in the three hole, playing at third base, first start there. Continuing the hot September we were talking about. And the pitch will be inside to him, one and one. Yeah, up and down a number of times this year, but at the end of the day, he's really done a nice job early on. I mean, they brought him up, what, it had a 316 lifetime batting average against lefties, and he hit right handers better for more power. One ball, one strike delivery on the way, and that'll be fouled off. They have caught a piece of him. Yeah, that's that sinker that Jenkins has. Ground ball pitcher with a change up to go with it. Much this ball run. A little two seamer runs right in under his hand and hits it right down at his instep. Oriole designated hitters overall hit 227. Valencia as a DH hit 228. Oriole DH has had 20 home runs. Valencia. Seven of those 20. That'll go to second base. One, Reyes, two. No runs on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. Five complete here at Camden Yards. Orioles trying to take the season series. So far, so good. Series opens up Red Sox in town. Game one of three. Scott Feldman on the mound against Clay Buckholtz. Our coverage on Mass and HD begins at 6:30 with those extra presented by Geico. Followed by our game coverage at seven. All the access you need right here on Mass. Take a look. Our next and last out of our major league notebook. Jacoby Ellsbury is back. Returned to the lineup last night. He'd missed 16 with a foot injury. Mike Napoli has been out four straight ball games. Hopes to be back playing. He's had that uh, plantar fasciitis problem. And uh, I hope they enjoyed Baltimore today and tonight because the Red Sox arrived here last night. Day off in Baltimore. Orioles lead the series 9-7. Yeah, Ellsbury actually hit that ball against the Orioles up in Boston. Yeah, that's when they. Uh, a thinkular bone, I think, uh, that he fractured on that foul ball straight down. So there are the numbers for Miguel. Pretty efficient. A lot of strikes tonight to this point. And a 1 0 count. He's going through, as you mentioned, that part of the ball game that's been a struggle for him in the middle. Okay, and right there, he just, uh, you know, didn't quite get closed. He goes left, ball goes right. 1 0 delivery on the way. Kawasaki a strike. Kawasaki walked in the first inning, scored the unearned run. Hit in the ball game. Pilar got it in the third inning. And that has been it. 3 9 and 2 for the Orioles. 1 1 and 0 for the Jays. And it'll be a foul ball. 
So he can uh, Gonzalez continues what he did in that last game we mentioned earlier even though he took a loss at Tampa Bay he gave up only two hits and in six innings. But there were a couple of walks and the home run by Jennings that brought him in. It made the difference in the ball game. And then he ran into Alex Cobb, who was on his way to almost pitching a complete game with 12 strikeouts. Cobb is pitching in the ball game tonight against the Yankees as Tampa Bay tries to extend their wild card lead. 2 2 delivery on the way, and Kawasaki down to first and foul. Two balls, two strikes. Well, they love him in Toronto. I first saw him in Seattle. High energy guy. And he can play shortstop pretty well. Gonzalez 2 2 delivery to him, and that'll be inside. Okay, I mean, that's a great take. You know, a veteran guy coming out of Japan. Otherwise, you know, most of your young hitters would have chased that. And if you do, very hard to put an up and in fastball. Now all of a sudden, uh, three to one lead. He's probably going to get a strike to hit. Three two delivery time, and that's down to first, and that two is going to go foul. Well, Kawasaki's had a couple of at bats where he's made Miguel Gonzalez work. Three and two. This is going to be the eighth pitch of this at bat. He worked a similar at bat for that walk his first time up in the ball game. And this time a chopper a comebacker. Gonzalez has got it. And the runner. Deposits are now being accepted for the Oriole Park Five Bagger Sweet Package for 2014. It's going to be the 60th anniversary season of the Orioles. So make next season even more memorable with an all inclusive suite for 14 guests for five games, including games against the Yankees and Red Sox. They'll be catering, parking, and more. So you can book your five bagger suite package now. You'll receive tickets to the opening day as well. You can do it by going to Orioles.com slash suites. Here's Lowry, flight out to center twice, over his last 17. Average of 246 right now, and the pitch will be taken outside. This will be the last game on the road for the Jays this season. They are 34 and 46 away from Toronto. They will head back home for a very meaningful final three game set against Tampa Bay. 2 0 delivery, and that's going to be outside. And the count goes to three and zero. Oh. Well, John Gibbons has got him playing hard. I mean, they're un outmanned because of all the injuries. But they are scrapping. A lot of young players trying to make an impression. Ought to be a great series. I mean, the pitching matchups are really good. Jeremy Hellickson, who has struggled against Dickey, Chris Archer against J.A. Happ, and Matt Moore against Todd Redmond. Three one delivery on the way and a slapper to short. Hardy on the money with the throw, two down. So there are back to back three ball pitches by Gonzalez. You don't want to get to three and two as he did to Kawasaki or three and one, but he's made two outstanding pitches. Eleven in a row have been retired by Miguel Gonzalez. Last batter to reach was the error in the third inning, Reyes. Here's Sierra. He set into a fielder's choice and has reached on an error. Moise Sierra. And he'll pump that one out of play in the first base side. Cardinals magic number is one to win the Central in the National League, but they got to wait. St. Louis, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati are all idle today, so won't be any decision on anything there until tomorrow. If then, here's the 0 1 pitch, and that's going to go down the line. Pierce, and he'll run out of room. Yeah, you get tarped. You can get down right there. Maybe the only design flaw of this ballpark is that the tarp is actually on the field to play. I'm not sure where else you could put it, but bring it up here. <laughs> You know, might not get it on rainy nights. Quickly, on rainy, rainy nights, night, yeah. 
can just <laughs> throw it out to him. Where would you put the time here? Put it up beyond the center field wall. Oh, that's a long way to get it in. Yeah. Especially if you have to do it a couple of times when it gets wet. Just put it in the opponent's dugout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a great idea. That's probably the best idea that you've come up with. <laughs> they don't need to sit. <laughs> no. Well, they can sit on top of the tarp. <laughs> Sierra with the 0-2 gun. Gonzalez delivers, and that'll be chop foul. It's more kind of like the warm-up man. I know Vince Scully, the great uh, Vince Scully, said that's one of his pet peeves. Warm-up man's on the field to play, and shouldn't be there. And you know, you never really think about it if you're playing on a field that doesn't have them. But the minute you do, guys are <laughs> tripping over them, coming up and down the mounds. You know, people scurrying out of the way. <laughs> Count goes to one and two. They're trying to get the young hitter. And he's got 13 doubles. Only Pedroia with more doubles since he came up. And trying to get him to chase. And nothing close enough. Sierra takes the pitch away. Count will go to two balls and two strikes. They could have the pitching mounds out on the field. And then put the tarp right in the middle between the two. How would that be? <laughs> I noticed you're a little great. quiet for a moment. Well, I was thinking yeah, about that. that. I know. It'd be great. It'd be great to be able to design the worst possible ballpark you could think of. Design the ballpark in a way that would be inconvenient to everyone. You'd have the seats turned the other way, so not facing the field. <laughs> Well, we already have some parks with broadcasting booths that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, swing and a miss, and Gonzalez continues. It's 12 in a row he has set down. The one thing we would not change, <laughs> those food babies. Tonight, compared to the previous six games, completely different. As the Oriole Bats have come alive, getting the victory in the ball game last night, with the runners on, chances, scoring chances, none of which they had in those previous yeah. six games. Yeah, and we can actually, I think, do it. We'll give a. We don't want to take an, a home run away from the Orioles, so they actually had four last night and one tonight. So that's five. Well, one of the big. Problems for the Orioles early on was their pitching and for Toronto kind of ongoing. And they come in what their starters 14th with a 480 ERA. So Orioles have been able to take advantage of that, even though Burley have been pitching very well on the road. And Jones up. Adam will take the pitch away. He has singled and grounded out. Weeders and Hardy will follow for the Orioles, bottom half of the sixth inning. Burley left the ball game with the right calf contusion after the ball was hit back to him by Pierce hit hard off the calf of the leg he came out Chad Jenkins on Gibbons team has picked up only one hit 
The Pilar single. That's it off Gonzalez for the Orioles to put up nine. RBIs. Marquegas has got a double. Weeders a home run and a sack fly for Matt. Unearned run. First inning for Toronto. Jones will take it for a strike. And the count goes to three and one. And that's foul right back into the screen as he tried to jump on that. Yeah, pretty good swing there. Not around it, stayed on it. 348 number coming in against the Jays on the year. Seven homers and coming with that kind of a swing. Yeah, Adam trying to uh, get the career high in home runs, number 33. That one runs in on his fist. A lot of late movement from uh, Chad Jenkins. And we saw that with uh, Todd Redmond the other day. Mm -hmm. yeah, not a lot of velocity, but really good movement. And Adam was talking about the cut fastball. We saw Casey Jansen come in and get the save on Tuesday night. He said, you know, late moving fastball, same as a cutter. It's hard to get the good part of the bat on the good part of the ball. 3 2 delivery, and that again is going to be fouled back by Jones. Well, Jenkins trying to find a way to get Adam out of there, leading off the sixth inning. Adam's going to work at least an eight pitch at bat to start the inning out. Jenkins has been a starter and reliever. Shattered back to short. Reyes on a short hop. That's a tough play. Ball not hit very hard, and I think he thought he might be able to catch it on the line. Couldn't, so he just made an easy backhand play. Not as easy as that one looks. Matt Wieters coming up. Our Lexus at Towson drive of the game. Yeah, hit a hanging curveball off Mark Burley and. 22nd home run of the year, and now even righty and lefty is 11 apiece. Our drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson, the Baltimore area's number one Lexus dealer. Come see why they're number one at LexusofTowson.com. Two RBI ball game for Matt. And that one will be fouled back. Weeders coming into the game hitting 212 against Toronto this year. Didn't have a home run against the Jays. Does now. And he's got seven RBIs against him. 0 1. Jenkins pitch off the fist style back. Oh, to the count. Set up is outside. That's where the pitch is, and it'll go to one and two. Yeah, it's kind of a worthless pitch to set off a foot off the outside corner and hit the glove. I mean, this, what does that do? Well, how about just move the glove about two inches off the outside corner? It makes a little more sense. One two is in there. It'll go to center. Goes. We'll put it away. Two down here in the sixth. Yeah, Mo Drabowski, when he pitched for the Orioles, of course, the, one of the heroes of the World Series when he struck out 11 Dodgers in six and two thirds innings in game one in 66. He used to just tell the catcher, just sit on the outside corner, split the outside corner with your body, and then he would hit the glove, and they would call the ball, and Earl would run into the locker room and see where the center field camera was. And then when he would see where you're sitting off the, the plate, he would go, please. <laughs> Give the target over the plate, <laughs> which made kind of a lot, a lot of sense. Never told him that, but no, I'm <laughs> <not> sure. <laughs> Fouled yeah. off, hit Hardy in the batter's box. JJ is flied out and grounded out. Yeah, two for five off of Chad uh, Jenkins with a home run. Big kick. Six three ish, you know, well over probably 220, 225. And the 0 2 delivery to Hardy. That'll be a pitch outside. One ball, two strike count on JJ Hardy. 
Orioles looking to pick up their record here at home where they are 43 and 34 in the year. The Orioles finished three games below 500 on the road and Hardy is out of there. So Jenkins gets his second strikeout. He retires the Orioles in order in the sixth inning. Orioles lead it three to one. On ball routine, except Jason Friday drops it. Kawasaki running hard. Got to give him credit. One nothing Jays. And here come the Orioles. Matt Wieters, 22nd home run. Curve ball off of Mark Burley. All tied at 1 1. Bunt base hit. Uh, the double that uh, Pilar doesn't play well off the bat of Nick Markakis. And then uh, Matt Wieters with a sacrifice fly to make it 3 to 1. Burley leaves after getting hit in the right calf with a line drive. Miguel Gonzalez, only the uh, one earned run, only the one hit, only the one walk. Pitch count at 95 as he gets into the seventh inning with a 3 to 1 lead. And Geico saving people money on more than just car insurance. I think they know that by now. No, can never assume that. And motorcycles. Never, never assume that. Save you money on motorcycle insurance. Absolutely. Or insuring you a gecko. Into right field. That'll be hauled in by Marquez. Ghost is retired. Went away in the seventh inning. And Gonzalez yes. is throwing a one hitter with one unearned run on the board. Last batter to reach was in the third inning. Uh, Reyes reached on an error. The only hit, Pilar, and it was a clean hit in the third inning. Oh, a nice little mix, eh? A lot of fastballs. That's your high percentage pitch. And then a lot of quality breaking balls. Splitters and we've seen curve balls, a couple of good sliders. JP Aaron Sebia, the 0 for 2 and 0 for 6 in the series. 1 0 count from Gonzalez. And that will be taken away. And the count will go to 2 0. And, and the, Ray, the Jays certainly know that they're one uh, base runner away from getting the tying run to the plate. And that's what they're looking for. It is that kind of a ball yeah. game. Three left on by each team down to third. That'll be foul. Here we nine and two for the Orioles. Yeah, talking to JP uh, Aaron CB yesterday, he has played through some knee problems. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but uh, the other really negative things that uh, for a guy that hit 20 home run, the lowest OPS in the history of baseball, under 600. And lifts that one to left field towards the corner. Friday's not going to get it. It'll be on a hop. Aaron Sebia is going to go for two. The throw, not in time. And the head first dive, Aaron Sebia picks up a one out double. Yeah, a little breaking ball that stays up. Uh, it's a 2 1 pitch, so only a 10. It's just a. Maybe it's a backup slider. You know, watch it just back up a little bit and kind of hits it out on the end of the uh, bat, and then and here it is. It just kind of drops it in down the left field line. So now all of a sudden your tying run is at home plate. 
13 in a row had been retired by Gonzalez prior to that double. So here in the seventh, Jays with their second hit of the ball game bring the potential tying run to the plate. Langerhaus, 0 for 2, has struck out and popped out. And down to first, that is a fair ball right over the bag. Pierce makes the play. Runner goes to third. There are two down. Celebrate 60 years of Orioles baseball at the 2014 Dream Week in beautiful Sarasota. You can bring your big league dreams to life with a week filled with baseball games at Buck O'Neill Baseball Complex and the Ed Smith Stadium. Instruction from the former O's and a full major league experience. Travel packages include hotel, flights, and your own Orioles uniform. For details, Orioles.com slash Dream Week. So a runner at third. There are two down. Goings will try and pick up an RBI. And he will take the pitch inside for a ball. 27,498 on hand here tonight. 27498. Good crowd on a beautiful evening. As the Orioles look to go 10 and 9 against the Jays on the year. Yeah, Ryan Goings a couple of hits in this series the other way. I mean, right like there, good take because. Well, that was not what you wanted to hit early in the count. Good split finger fastball that uh, really dropped. Toronto looking for their first hit with a runner in scoring position. They are 0 for 4. Now 4 for 26. 1 1 delivery on the way and a swing and a miss. 1 and 2. Now, Tom, Tommy Hunter, who's done a nice job for the O's, and he's getting loose just in case. Gonzalez now one strike away from getting out of this inning. Boy, his split fingered fastball. It's a ground ball pitch. It's a strikeout pitch if he can keep it down. You can see right there, eight pitches from with the season high. There's the average over on the left, 96. One two count runner off third base, and that'll be up high for a ball. And just one of those uh, Oriole pitching coach Billy Castro said where well, you don't quite get closed and you fly open, and that's why the ball. Really almost to the backstop. But show Walter getting an evaluation yeah. or, or telling yeah, Billy Castro what he's going to do here as far as Gonzalez is concerned. Two ball, two strike count goings. Aaron Sebia off third base. And going swings and misses. He got him. Strikeout number five for Gonzalez. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. Seventh inning stretch time here at Camden Yards. Orioles lead it three to one. Are over. Great job. Seven innings, one honor and run, a couple of hits. He's done for the night. Take a look at our Hollywood Casino League leaders, slots, tables, and dining, the ultimate triple play at Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races. And those are amazing numbers in my mind because 
that's usually when the opposing managers really trying to to match up. So it gives you an idea of uh, how good the offensive teams. Uh, you know, obviously the Sox and the Orioles right behind them, and the Angels, even though they've had their injuries, and then the surprising Indians with Terry Francona. Ryan Flaherty. He will be the pinch hitter for Pierce. And the pitch will be taken down low. Against Toronto, he has had a career. Two home runs in the ball game last night, nine games. Average way up there. And by far the best numbers he has against any opponent at the major league levels against these Jays. Well, if you cannot get your breaking ball over, he becomes a very, very good hitter. Real good fastball hitter, pull hitter, even though he did smoke that ball to left center last night, blasted it the opposite field. And that's the kind of swings you're going to get when you're 2 and 0 and you end up in the middle of the plate. Ryan Flaherty's a 300 hitter lifetime against the Toronto team Flaherty he has picked up six home runs 12 RBIs and a 300 average in 21 games the pitch is there for a strike Chad Jenkins on the mound count goes to two and two and that gets Jenkins right back into the count and puts doubt in the mind of Ryan Flaherty well, just a little breaking ball didn't have to be a great one but just threw it for a strike. The two yeah, delivery and he's gone. Jenkins yeah. gets the K. And that's what the breaking ball, when you pitch from behind and you pitch backwards, does to hitters, especially young guys that favor hitting the fastball. I mean, this this is a home run ball or a ball you can drive, except you don't know what's coming once he plants that doubt in your mind. Jason Pridey coming up. A single, and he is grounded out. So he's had a couple of hits and six at bats and an RBI in this series. Friday, the late call up by the Orioles. Getting into the ball game yesterday. A lot of major league, some major league experience over the years. He puts that one up in the air towards center. Yeah, his best year was uh, with the Mets, playing 101 games. And how about the job Jenkins has done? He's done exactly what you want from. Your long man, as we mentioned, a starter uh, had to have some arm injuries early on and then worked his way back up to double A, triple A, and in the big leagues last year, double A, and then uh, Toronto. Working his third full inning of relief. Came on and got two outs in the fourth when Burley had to leave with the injury to the calf, and he's given up only one single. That was a Marqueca space hit. And the pitch will be inside. Jonathan Scope is hit into a double play. And he has struck out. The scope in his second major league ball game and getting the start again at second base. Joining, of course, Larry Haney, the 1960 Orioles catcher. Only he and Scope are in the record books. And the Orioles to Homer in their first major league game. Larry Haney. Larry Haney. Great guy. July 27, 66 against the Indians. I was there. I don't remember that. I'm sorry, nope. Larry. Last out of my no hitter. And a swing and a miss. You should remember. <laughs> well, that. I remember that. Oh. But I don't remember the home run. I know he's a pull hitter. Great guy. Looked down at Virginia. Longtime scout from Milwaukee. There's uh, Perez. Tommy John last year, so he's happy to be back flinging. Line two delivery fouled away. Yeah, and they're trying to stay away from the fastball to Jonathan Scope because that's what he you know, single in the home run last night. Angels in Texas have started out one maybe a slugfest. A couple of innings have already scored seven runs combined. Angels lead Texas four to three. Here's the one two delivery swung out of miss and Jenkins looking more like a starter than a reliever in this one. Sets the side down in order seven complete. Orioles three Jays one.
And for Miguel Gonzalez, he had Toronto hitters talking to themselves with a splitter that would fall off the table. Fastball, he was putting by him. And he ended up with five strikeouts in the ball game. He's done and a chance to win his 11th. Yeah, nice little mixture of a lot of strikes. I mean, 70 uh, 36, so good to uh, strike the ball ratio, and then uh, only the unearned run. And Tommy Hunter will come on in relief to run lead. His last uh, game, uh, the walk off home run by James Loney. A lot of innings for Tommy. He really pitched well. I mean, lefties, all the home runs are left handed. Right handers, look at the numbers 130. The lefties, the average obviously higher. All the home runs, 11 of them. What made a big difference in this bullpen. Power arm, got all kinds of pitches. Yeah, just needs to throw strikes, quality ones. And that pitch is in there for a strike. Flaherty will stay in the ball game and play at first base for the Orioles. Ryan Flaherty coming on for Pierce. Pilar, the first hit, third inning, and for a while the only hit. That one will bring Marquegas over to the corner, way, way over, and that's going to be a foul ball. And Nick just put his head down and uh, scurried. And the ball, luckily, slicing foul. That slice takes it away from you if you're a right fielder off a right hand, bat of a right hander. That's the Marquegas corner. He could open up a deli down there if he would like. <laughs> Perhaps a smoothie stand. He's the only one who ever goes over there, except for the ground crew when they're working on the field. That's where they come in and out with. Well, the way he's the played equipment. right, yeah, the way he's played right field this year, he can open up anything he wants down in that corner. See, that's a big door there that you can drive everything through to get out onto the field and escape. Escape route. <laughs> Nick disappears over there from our view anyway, but not yours. Our great camera people get the shots for you. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way, and another one down the way that's going to go foul. So you read the bat there, and you just throw him a nice little cutter, about knee high. Started on the outside corner and let him chase. Young hitter, showed us last night, pretty good fastball hitter. Pilar will loop that one in for a base hit. Jones coming over will cut it off. So he's got two hits in the ball game. And a runner on to lead off the eighth inning. And again, the potential tying run coming to the plate. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Reyes the leadoff batter and 0 for 3 in the ball game, but we're back at the top of the order. And Reyes with a 1 for 2 off Hunter lifetime. That's all he's faced in. And a strike taken. And it helps set up the inning uh, because of the runner at first. They'll hold them on, even though he got a two run lead. And we've seen Reyes doesn't hit a lot of home runs, but just uh, of his 10 it's right handers, 309 hitter, and seven of them this way. Gonzalez waiting, hoping he's got a chance to be an 11 game winner. He went nine and four last year for the Orioles in a major league debut season. Can be 11 and 8 if the Orioles can hang on and get the victory in this ball game. Here's the 1 1 delivery up the middle. That's going to go right over the bag in the center field. Jones will charge to make sure to hold the runner, but here are the Jays threatening in the eighth. First two are on and nobody out. Time to text in your vote for the AT&T player of the game. Here are the candidates for Gal Gonzalez with that outstanding start. Nick Marquecas, he's picked up double single, RBI, and a run scored in the game. And for Matt Wieters, 22nd home run and a sacrifice fly. Text in your vote A, B, or C, 318 26. And you can already see uh, Kawasaki squaring around like he's going to bunt. He, now he popped up a bunt early back in the third, but on you know, Tuesday night, uh, one of the key bunts off of Gosman to, to bring the tying run into scoring position. And he's, then they would score. He's four for six of the home run off Hunter, and he drives that to center. Jones is way in. Way back. Nice running catch. Runner at second, tagging up. Pilar will go to third. Reyes will go back to first. Jones had moved way in against Kawasaki, and Kawasaki ripped one. They just got enough air underneath it that Adam could run it down. You could see, I mean, true, really good jump on this ball. And he catches it pretty easily. Reyes uh, kind of kicking himself that he didn't tag up. And there's the end of the uh, the catch. And that will be it for Hunter. 
made. Nope. Billy Castro's coming out. Yeah, I think they're going to probably come out because other than uh, Raji Davis, who went home because his wife is having labor induced this afternoon, Reyes has the most steals. So what are you going to do? Again, your tying runs at first. He'll talk it over as Lowry will be coming up with one away and runners at first and third. Reyes was all the way down to second base on that fly ball, so he had uh, no option except to retrace his steps and get back to first. Yeah, if you think it's an obvious out, which I don't think that was, then you'll go and tag up if it's deep enough. But that ball had a good chance of getting over his head because of the uh, shallowness of his and depth of the way he was playing. So first and third one away. Lowry with the 0 for 3. 0 for his last 18. And Lowry of course comes through here. That's going to get down into the corner. Pilar will score. Reyes to third. He will be held as the relay throw comes in. Lowry gets a double and an RBI. And Toronto's right back in at a 3-2 ball game. Well, a couple of uh, high lazy sliders. Yeah, it's been that kind of year for Tommy Hunter. He's pitched so much. Look at this. Just stays in the middle of the plate. It's a hanger very much like the pitch to Millar with two strikes. And Lowry finally, you know, he kind of generates some bat speed when uh, your velocity is down on the hanging slider. And Reyes is going to get held up at the last minute by Luis Rivera. Well, the RBI puts two in scoring position and brings up Sierra who's batting cleanup. He is 0 for 3. Hunter's delivery to him and Sierra will take it for a strike. 44 RBIs on the year for Lowry out there at second base. And the Rays threatening now not only to tie it up, but maybe take the lead in the game as Rodriguez gets loose for the Orioles. Hunter's delivery slapped. Foul 0 and 2. 97 97. Now infield back because the uh, potential winning run is at second. So other than maybe a ground ball to Valencia, even though Reyes can run well. He's kind of talking to Rivera. What do you want me to do? Great speed out at second with Lowry. So you need a strikeout here. Now the infield moves in. Oh. And a swing and a miss. So Tommy Hunter, a big strikeout on Sierra. Well, two hanging sliders early on. I mean, this, this Weeders calls the right pitch and Tommy executes. He got a young hitter. Try to hit 97 and he couldn't. So Ghost comes up. There are two down, two on. And Hunter will try and end it right here and keep it at a one run ball game. And goes a better low ball hitter we've learned in this series than a high ball hitter. He is one for three off Hunter. Reyes on at third base. Lowry on at second. Ghost has had a couple of hits in 12 at bats in the series. Hunter's 0 1 delivery to him will be inside. One ball, one strike. So Toronto against Gonzalez, one on earned run, and a couple of hits have come back here in the eighth inning to put a run up on the board and pick up three hits in the inning. Here's the 1 1 delivery by Hunter, and jammed him. Great pitch in to tied him up one and two. See, so there's the good slider. A couple of bad ones early on, and then the good one. Now the bullpen, uh, you, you got to be on right away. Easy to make bad pitches, but. Nothing wrong with that one. Perfect. One two delivery on the way and that'll be inside. Tommy against uh, Toronto this season is one and oh zero and one in saves. He's given up seven runs 18 hits and ten and two thirds innings coming in so Toronto's really put some numbers up against Tommy this season. Two ball, two strike delivery goes, fouls it back. Sitting on heat, that's what yeah. he got. Well, that's around. probably as good of a swing as you're going to have at 97. Because it was in the middle of the plate. And you can look on deck. I mean, the go ahead run is out at second, and you got a guy on deck who's really struggled. He's two for 17 lifetime against you. So it's not that you, in this count, two and two, that you don't try to get those out. It's just you do it on your turn. You've got a base open. Runners off second and third. 2-2 delivery goes. Gone! 
And he gets two Ks. The Jays will pick up a run. Three hits, no errors. They leave two in scoring position. The Orioles' lead is 3-2. in a one-run ball game as it goes to three and uh, two. And as we talked about last year, Jim, again this season, with the starting pitching struggling for much of the year until September, the bullpen again, a lot of innings, worked for the Orioles. Well, you're right, and I think you can see in Tommy, I, I mean, that was 98. He, he, you know, he made a couple of bad pitches. It's easy to do with your slider. Kind of lazy, didn't get around him, and then all of a sudden he goes, you know what, I still got 98. You know, a couple of strikeouts and whatever. But I mean, this has been a terrific game because Gonzalez, if he wins, he'll win for the 11th time. Two more wins than last year. Wheaters hits now 11 home runs from both sides of the plate. We've seen bunts, we've seen sacrifice flies, and this is a scrappy little J team. Yes, I mean, is. they turn three double plays, or the Orioles obviously have a lot more than three runs. So, and they're going to get to see Jimmy Johnson as we now see uh, Steve Delabar. Johnson will probably come in trying to get his 48 saves. Delabar out of the bullpen for Jenkins who did a tremendous job. Chad Jenkins three and two thirds innings. He gave up one hit and struck out four. He held the fourth. Roberts will lead it off here as we're playing the bottom of the eighth inning. That one will be fouled away. Brian, a major contributor in the ball game, a couple of singles and a run scored. Brian has gone two for three. The Delabar tries to hold it, give the Jays a chance going into the ninth inning. And Roberts will take the pitch up high. Top of the order, Roberts, Marquegas, and Valencia. Delabar's 1 1 delivery. Hit in the air, deep to right field, back near the warning track, and with room, it'll be put away by Sierra. So Roberts retired on the long fly ball out. For every Orioles walk this season, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 supporting the Y of Central Maryland's fit and fun program. To date, the Orioles have drawn 407 walks, a total of $20,350. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Here's Nick Marquegas. Nick with an RBI double, a single. He scored a run. Nick now has a four game hit streak. Also has hit into a double play tonight. One down bottom of the eighth. Yeah, Delabar who had some shoulder problems early on and then early on in his uh, career. You know, the, uh, the broken elbow, the plate, the nine screws independently worked his way back in. Uh, was with Seattle till Toronto got him in the middle of last season. That'll be to left not deep. Pilar coming on and he'll put it away. Marquegas is retired. Two down in the eighth inning. MLB.com at bat is celebrating five years as your number one mobile app for live baseball. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, Blackberry 10, and Windows Phone 8. 
At bat delivers Orioles baseball with live audio pitch tracking stats highlights and more. Text at bat three one eight two six or go to Orioles dot com for details. Jim Johnson the Oriole closer getting ready to go it is a save situation. Valencia with two down Orioles up by one. Danny is double one for three in the ball game and Delabar's pitch will be outside to him. Valencia one for four. Off Delabar. Marquegas. Weeders. The RBIs. As the Oriole catcher has two. One and a home run is 22nd. 1 0 delivery. And it'll be inside. And then now uh, Matt with 12 sacrifice flies on the year. He's been the major league leader most yeah. of the season. In sack flies. Get him on, he'll get him in. Give you the RBIs. 2 0 count on Valencia. And that'll be in the air to right field. That one hit back near the warning track. Again, room. And again, Sierra puts it away. So Delabar comes on, retires the side in order. Time to buckle him up, sports fans. Put that in, pull it tight. Here comes Johnson. Masson is brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Here at Camden Yards, the Orioles three outs away from winning the season series against Toronto. They're 9-9. Jim Johnson will come on and try and wrap it up here in the ninth inning. Well, there he uh, comes in. He came in on Tuesday night, so you can see 47 out of 56. You know, a lot of strikeouts. Uh, I mean, keeps the ball in the ballpark. We talked about it all year. Probably the key for him. Throw the sinker. He's done that about 72% of the time. Only down 2% from last year. But uh, if you can, in a one run ball game, first batter, very important to get him out. For Jim against Toronto this season, he's got a win and a loss, uh, two losses. Saves wise, six out of seven. This will be the 11th game he's worked in. Pitching nine innings, five runs on ten hits, a couple of walks, and ten strikeouts. Jim right now still leads the American League with the 47 saves. Greg Holland's got 45 with KC. Rivera's 44 is third. And Aaron Sebia will hit against him. JP Aaron Sebia leading off the top of the ninth. He has doubled one for three in the ball game. Langer Hans and then Goings do up. One on one. Well, there's a good late movement that we saw on Tuesday night. I don't know if Ryan Goins is going to bat. Actually, he's a what, couple of hitters away. He said, I've never seen a ball drop like that at 96. Had a great sinker a couple of nights ago. Aaron Sevia, three for nine off Johnson lifetime, fouls it back, and the count goes to one and two. Man, he didn't hesitate to swing at that curveball. Jimmy had them all going the other night. Change ups and hooks and great sinkers. Both teams have struggled in these one run ball games. The Orioles 17 and 31, while the Jays are 20 and 27. 
Here's the one two delivery to him and a swing and a foul ball off the end of the bat. Gonzalez looking to get the win. He'd be 11 and 8. Burley would end up taking the loss even though he worked three and a third. He gave up the three runs on eight hits before he had to leave with a contusion to the calf. Then he could hit on a comeback. Here's the one two delivery and that'll be foul back. Burley would be 10 and uh, 12 and 10 if they in fact lose this ball game here in the ninth. Johnson ready with a one two delivery towards the hole long throw Hardy and what a pick at first base by Ryan Flaherty and the lead off and is retired uh, you bring the right hander Jenkins in and Pierce leaves the game and then right here you can see it roll up his hand so it's a bounce throw and it's not an easy play Ryan Flaherty can play anyway. People forget. I mean, this is the best defense in baseball, and he was a big part of it playing second base early on. He can play the outfield, he can play shortstop. And he's going nice pick. Certainly was. Flaherty has had one start at first base this year. One down, ninth inning. Langerhans up, he's 0 for 3. Ground out, pop out, strikeout. Langerhans. Against Johnson with one down. Jim with a 1 0 delivery. And that will miss outside 2 0. <laughs> 2 0 pitch. Langerhans takes it up high. So Langerhans gets ahead on the count 3 0. Jim Johnson the 3 0 pitch taken all the way it is in there for a strike. Yeah, certainly I didn't think he's going to get the green light you never know though. Three one delivery. Langer Hans will take it again. He wasn't going to swing and the count goes to three and two. Well, I'm not sure he's going to get a better pitch to hit than that one. Three two delivery. Langer has a comebacker. Johnson's got it. Two out. And he didn't get a better pitch. He got a 95 mile per hour sinker to the bottom dropped out. And it starts in the middle of the plate and dives to the outside corner. So when Jimmy Johnson's on his game, he's throwing ground balls. Two for two here in the ninth. Jim is after his 99th save over the last two years. He's already become the fourth pitcher in Major League history to have as many as 98 over a two season span with Gagne, Rodriguez, John Smoltz, the others. Now he's got a shot at his 48th save of the season. Goings up 0 for 3. Pitch will be taken down low for a ball. Ryan Goings, ninth inning, two down, nobody on. Out on their feet here at Camden Yards, cheering on Jim Johnson. 1-0 delivered, and we fouled away. Goings will stand back in, one ball and one strike. First Oriole to have two 40 save seasons. Back to back. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way. Goings fires it off, and it's 1-2. and two. So imagine you come to the big leagues. You start off really well. you got an eight-game hitting streak, and you've been struggling, and now you got Jimmy Johnson with one strike to go, and you have no idea what he's going to throw. That's what Goings is going through. One ball, two strike delivery. Up the middle. And a base hit. 
Right through the box on that one. Jim may have even touched that on the way through, but not enough to slow it down for anybody to make a play. And a two out single here in the ninth inning keeps it alive for the Jays. The goings on with a base hit. Now Pilar will come up there, number nine hitter. He's already had a couple of hits in the ball game. The left fielder, two singles and a run scored. Yeah, and the whole outfield, especially Adam Jones in center, a couple of steps deeper. Take away the double. Strike one. Yep. Pilar looks like a real good high ball hitter. And that's what he's hit tonight. High slider, hard, high fastball into center field. And the pitch to him will miss outside. Pilar, one ball, one strike, two down here in the ninth. The Orioles came back after trailing 1 0 in the first. They tied it up. Got a couple of runs in the third inning to take the 3 to 1 lead. The Jays picked up one in the eighth. Outside with it. Good eye as he leaned into it and a 2 1 count. Pilar in just his 33rd game of the season. Hasn't reached 90 at bats. Pilar in a swing and a miss. Well, there you go again. I, I don't know anybody in baseball gets the ball at 95 to sink like that. Pilar thinks he's got something to hit. Watch this ball just dive down and in at 95 miles per hour. Moved about half the distance of the plate. Runner at first, two away. Jim Johnson's 2 2 delivery, and that's the ball game as the Orioles take the season series. Ten games to nine against the Blue Jays and come away with a 3 to 2 win to wrap up the season series. Gonzalez, the winner, is 11 and 8. Burley, the loser, he is 12 and 10. And Jim Johnson gets the save.